Greetings, and welcome to the Movie Recap Vault. In this session, we're presenting a 2011 action, mystery, sci-fi and thriller movie called Limitless. Eddie Mora is on the ledge of his apartment's balcony in New York City, deciding whether to jump to his death or to be tortured to death by the thugs trying to enter his apartment. He then flashes back to a time not so long ago when he was a struggling writer, but nobody believed he had a book contract. He passed time drinking in a bar, watching Bruce Lee movies on TV and waiting for motivation to begin writing anything for his book. Eddie's girlfriend Lindy returns his apartment's key at a coffee shop and surprises him. She doesn't want to be his girlfriend, cleaning lady and bank anymore. He asks her about her job opportunity and she tells him she's now an editor and has her own assistant. Eddie is happy for her and tells her she deserves it as she leaves. Vernon tells him he can help, he's working for a pharmaceutical company and can give him a drug that's been FDA approved and will be sold next year. It can allow Eddie to access 100% of his brain's potential. Vernon gets a phone call and has to leave, but tells Eddie to take the pill as a gift, that it usually costs $800 and leaves Eddie his business card in case he needs more. Eddie starts feeling sorry for himself as he walks to his apartment. Thinking that things can't get any worse, he takes the pill and walks upstairs. Valerie, the wife of Eddie's landlord, she yells at him saying that he's going to be on the street if he doesn't pay his rent. The drug suddenly affects Eddie and he realizes that all of his senses and thoughts are enhanced. But Eddie mentions the law book he saw sticking out of her bag. Eddie remembers that he'd seen the book 12 years ago while in college. He gives Valerie some suggestions on alternate subjects to write about. Eddie realizes that he can now remember information that he had read, heard, or seen on video from his past. Valerie suddenly starts smiling and asks Eddie for suggestions. They work on Valerie's assignment together and fool around on her bed. Eddie enters his apartment and is shocked at how filthy it is. He cleans it and rearranges the furniture. He realizes that he wasn't high or wired, but thinking very clearly and had energy. He happily starts writing his book. The drug's effects disappear while he's sleeping and he wakes feeling depressed. Eddie delivers what he wrote to his book publisher and asks her to review at least three pages. She left him three voice messages by the time he returned to his apartment. Eddie is ecstatic and wants to continue the enhanced mental state. He visits Vernon and finds him beaten and bruised. Vernon doesn't want to talk about who injured him. Eddie asks about the drug and its name. Vernon said it's called NZT48 by some, and it's not FDA approved. Regardless, Eddie wants more of the drug. Vernon tells him they can talk about that after Eddie runs some errands for him. Eddie goes to the dry cleaners and a restaurant to get food for Vernon. He finds Vernon's apartment door ajar when he returns, and the apartment trashed. Vernon is sitting on his couch dead from an apparent bullet hole in his forehead. Eddie starts looking for the NZT, and locates a bag of the pills, cash, and a little black book, hidden inside the oven. He conceals the items just prior to the police entering the apartment. The police question him at their station and Melissa calls while he's talking with a detective. Eddie remembers he hadn't heard her voice in 10 years. He tells Melissa that he'd happened to meet Vernon on the street the day before, and he should meet with her. Melissa said she's busy with the funeral arrangements and can't meet Eddie before or at the funeral. She'll call him eventually. Eddie leaves the station and is paranoid walking back to his apartment where he takes an NZT pill. Once again his vision and motivation are enhanced and he happily spends Vernon's money as he gets a haircut, exercises and gets new clothes. He finishes writing the book in four days. He becomes fluent in foreign languages just by listening. He gets a job offer from Kevin, who works with a Wall Street trading company. His new friends invite him to a faraway beach where his fears and shyness disappear. He begins more risky behavior to quench his thirst for a challenge. Eddie suddenly realizes what he wants to do and he must get capital to do it. The next day he made $7,500. Eddie wants to make money faster and asks Gennady for a $100,000 short-term loan. Gennady tells him he'll torture him to death if he doesn't pay back the loan. Kevin helps Eddie set up an account and shows him how to leverage his money as a day trader. Eddie has been increasing his dose of NZT and learning faster. After one week his brokerage account had $2 million in it. They start getting intimate again at their apartments. Lindy reads a newspaper article aloud about Eddie's success as a trader, and they both talk about getting an apartment together. While kissing Lindy, Eddie notices a man staring at them. That night Lindy is lying in bed and tells Eddie he should sleep because he has a meeting with Carl Van Loon in the morning. Eddie is standing by the window staring outside when he suddenly realizes he's in the hallway. Lindy is standing in the apartment doorway and asks him if he's okay and when he ate last. Carl hands Eddie a folder and asks Eddie to look at the companies and tell him what he thinks. Carl is very surprised and impressed that Eddie believes he's considering a huge merger with a company owned by Hank Atwood.
Carl tells Eddie to meet him the next day at the St. Regis to tell him how he should restructure the deals. Suddenly, Eddie starts hallucinating and having glitches in time. He realizes that he suddenly was 20 blocks further down the road than he was a short time prior. He starts drinking and dancing in a bar, and then meeting many people at a party. Eddie recognizes the man that stared at him in the park, now following him and a blonde lady he just met down a hotel corridor. Eddie starts hallucinating again as he's getting busy with the lady. Suddenly, Eddie finds himself on a subway platform being pushed around by thugs. Eddie remembers the fighting techniques he's seen used in movies and beats the thugs about the head and shoulders. Eddie then experiences another hallucinating time skip glitch as he speeds down the sidewalk and stops on a bridge realizing that he couldn't recall the past 18 hours. He limps back to his apartment to sleep. He wakes slowly to the sound of Lindy's voice message regarding him coming to her apartment and wanting him to call her. Eddie decides not to take another NZT pill. He then calls Kevin to tell him he won't be coming to the meeting with Carl because he's sick. Eddie agrees to go after Kevin tells him he won't get another chance to meet with Carl. At the meeting Carl asks Eddie about Hank Atwood. Carl said Atwood surprised him by his sudden progress in just two years. Eddie is distracted by what's on the TV. Eddie returns to his apartment and hears Melissa leaving a voice message. He lifts the receiver and insists that Melissa meet him. After calling multiple people he realizes that all of them are either dead or hospitalized. After calling another number he hears a phone near him ring. When Eddie turns to the sound he sees the man who has been following him answer the phone. Eddie manages to run away from the man chasing him, and escapes in a cab. Eddie searches the diner but doesn't recognize Melissa until she calls his name. The NZT took a negative physical toll on her appearance. She admits that she took NZT as well and it was great. She had many successful achievements but then got scared and stopped taking it. She then started having headaches and puking and talked with Vernon. Melissa tells Eddie not to stop suddenly or he'll die, that instead he needs to taper off the drug. Eddie wants to know who makes NZT but Melissa says she doesn't know. Gennady wants his loan repaid and while roughing up Eddie before he can get into his apartment he finds an NZT pill Eddie dropped. Eddie tells him it's just aspirin but Gennady swallows it. Eddie gets money from the bank and hands it to Gennady, who is enjoying the NZT effects already. Eddie stumbles into Lindy's office and collapses on the floor. She thinks he should go to a doctor but Eddie just wants her to get his pills. He admits that all of his recent energy and focus is due to the drug. Eddie hid his stash in Lindy's apartment and she agreed to get the pills. Eddie calls her to check if she got the pills as she's on her way back to him in a cab. She tells Eddie that someone is following her and Eddie says run. She asks for help from two strangers in the park and both are stabbed as Lindy runs away. Lindy hides from the man and calls Eddie again and tells him the man killed two people and is looking for her. He tells her to take a pill and it will allow her to know what to do in 30 seconds. After taking a pill and forming a plan she runs from the man and into an ice skating rink where she twirls a girl with skates at the attacker and injures him. Lindy then escapes. Finally in her office again, Lindy gives Eddie a pill and he recuperates. They both go to a hotel for the night. In the morning Eddie tells Lindy that he has a plan to get off the drug and Lindy lets him know she's unhappy and hopes he does get off NZT. As Eddie watches Lindy walk away, he notices Gennady who wants more pills. Eddie gives Gennady more pills that night and realizes he's not going to leave him alone. The next day Eddie hired two bodyguards. Eddie meets with Carl and apologizes. Carl doesn't accept Eddie's excuse but liked the projections that Eddie had sent him. At a restaurant Eddie recognizes the detective he talked with after Vernon died, and the man is staring at him. When Eddie talks with him he finds out that a witness identified Eddie as the person who was with the blonde lady who died in the hotel. Afterward, Eddie tells Carl that Atwood looks frail. While walking the hall, Carl suggests Eddie will earn $40 million from the merger. Eddie returns to the hotel room where he was staying and finds it trashed as if someone was searching the place. Eddie decides he needs a bunker. Eddie decides to buy a penthouse with high security for $8.5 million. Gennady approaches Eddie on the sidewalk and demands 20 NZT pills next week. Eddie tells him no. The next day Carl's team is waiting for Atwood's team that is late. Eventually, Atwood's wife appears and tells them that they still want to sign the merger but her husband had to be hospitalized. When Carl and Eddie accompany her to her limousine, Eddie sees that the man who chased him and Lindy is Atwood's employee. Eddie assumes the man was trying to get Eddie's NZT for his boss, and if Atwood had no NZT, he wouldn't get better. Eddie meets with his lawyer at the police station where Eddie must be in a police lineup. Eddie lets his lawyer hold his jacket before he goes into the lineup. Eddie was not identified by the witness and before he leaves the station his lawyer compliments his suit jacket. Eddie returns to Carl's office where news of a possible merger is being mentioned on the TV. 
Eddie denies talking to anyone about the merger plans. Carl says Atwood is now in a coma. Eddie begins to get a headache and goes to the restroom to have an overdue NZT pill, as Eddie hears Atwood's wife deny the merger on the news. Hearing the doorbell prompts Eddie to check the hall security camera monitor. Eddie sees Gennady and his thugs in the hallway. He thinks of calling someone but his phone has no service. Gennady tells him to open the door and starts banging on it. We then see Eddie standing on the ledge, where he was when the movie started. As he thinks about jumping to avoid torture, Eddie remembers that he may have one NZT pill in a moving box. As he desperately searches for the pill, Gennady's men are quickly breaching the door with power tools. Eddie finds one pill but drops it as Gennady enters his apartment. Gennady's men put Eddie on a ch- and one of the thugs has a damaged eye. Gennady unpackages his torture tools. When Gennady's back is turned, Eddie conceals the knife behind his back. Gennady's thugs search the apartment and use power tools to open the safe. Gennady leans down close to Eddie to hear what he's saying. Eddie stabs Gennady and pushes him against the counter, holding the knife in Gennady's abdomen until he stops moving. They both collapse on the floor. A large pool of blood is moving towards Eddie. Given Eddie's desire for NZT he decides to have a few sips of Gennady's blood. There's enough NZT in the blood to guide Eddie to his next attack phase. As one of Gennady's thugs returns to the room to tell him what was found in the safe, Eddie attacks the man's one good eye with a needle. Eddie tries to escape but is chased into the safe room, and out again. Suddenly the room is silent. The blind thug with the gun starts shooting wherever he hears a sound. Eddie pushes him through a window and leaves. After Atwood died, Eddie visits his employee who had been chasing him. Eddie explains that the lawyer Morris stole Eddie's pills and never gave them to Atwood which caused his death. They both visit the lawyer who was soon shown dead, allowing Eddie to reclaim his bag of pills. Twelve months later Eddie is running for a New York political office and meets his biggest campaign contributor, a pharmaceutical corporation representative. Eddie is surprised that the company's representative is Carl. Carl tells Eddie he bought the company a couple of months ago and the company can make NZT which he knows Eddie needs. Carl adds that he closed Eddie's current lab that morning. Carl wants Eddie to do him favors after he gets into the political office in exchange for Carl supplying NZT. Carl suggests they go have lunch together. Outside, Eddie rejects Carl's offer. Eddie tells Carl that a van across the street is going to crash into a taxi and it suddenly happens. Eddie says he's 50 steps ahead of Carl and everyone else. He then puts his hand over Carl's heart and tells him he probably already knew but he has heart problems, may die in 6 months and needs to get a valve replaced. Carl appears to understand that he can't intimidate or control Eddie and says they should talk later. Eddie says he doesn't think so, and Carl's car departs. The end. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more similar videos.